So for today's activity, we're going to be looking at some features of the moon's surface. And we talked about the craters that exist on the moon from objects striking it and hitting it and just leaving those impacts. And because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere like Earth, those stay there for long periods of time instead of being weathered away quickly by rain and wind. So we're going to create our own craters today on our own lunar surface. And to make this, we just need a few objects here. I've got some flour. I've got some Nestle Quick, just the chocolate drink mix. And we're going to use this to create a lunar surface. And then we just need a few objects. I've got some small rocks, a golf ball, a few things that we're going to drop onto the lunar surface that we make to make our craters. So we'll come over here and I'll show you how that works. All right, well, I've started making my lunar surface here. And in this pan, I've just poured some regular cooking flour. And I'm going to take some of this chocolate drink powder and I'm just going to sprinkle that over the surface just to kind of give it a darker color so that we can see what's going on a little bit better. So we're just going to sprinkle a very fine layer of this chocolate powder all over our lunar surface that we're making. And this is a great activity, you know, if you have these, a lot of people have these materials around their house, just uh, flour, chocolate drink mix powder, some kind of bowl or pan to put it in. This is great activity you can try at home, outside of course, because it is a little messy, to make your own craters. And to make craters, all we're going to do is just take these rocks that I've got here and this golf ball just to give us a different object with a little bit different density and shape. And we can try dropping these onto our lunar surface. And the neat thing to experiment with this is different sizes, different shapes of objects, and also different velocities of objects, how fast the objects are moving when they hit. For instance, I can take two rocks here with about the same size, and if I have one traveling at a low velocity, you can see when it hits, it makes a pretty big impact crater there for a small object. And we can try some other objects, other size objects. A larger rock, for instance, when it hits, makes a much bigger impact several times larger than the smaller rocks that we tried. So the other neat thing about this is that as we start to make a lot of holes, a lot of craters in our, our lunar surface here, unlike the actual lunar surface, we can kind of get a do-over on this one. All I have to do is just kind of shake it around a little bit, fill in all those holes, take my objects out, and then I can just add a little bit more of my chocolate powder. My golf ball's rolling away there. But I can add a little more of the chocolate powder to the surface here. and we can try some other objects and make some more craters. Here we go with the golf ball, a larger object, but maybe not as dense as the rock. But you can see again, just the impact that comes from a large object hitting the moon, the size crater it makes and that blast radius almost around it where it blows all of that debris out, not only right there at the point of impact, but all across the lunar surface. So this just gives you a little bit of an idea of how craters form. And again, you know, in the moon's surface, they don't have the wind. There's no atmosphere, no rain, no weather to cause these to kind of fill in, wash them away, erode. And so these craters will stay here. You know, again, when we see craters on the moon, they may be a crater from a week ago. They may be a crater from a thousand years ago. They stay as features of that lunar surface. So have fun making your own craters at home. And in the next lesson, we'll talk about the moon's different phases that we can observe from Earth.